So now we need to consider sub energy levels and evidence for the existence of these sub energy levels. The way that we do this is we look again at our graph of first ionization energies for the first 20 elements and just consider the little drops in ionization energy between elements 4 and 5, beryllium and boron, 7 and 8, nitrogen and oxygen, 12 and 13, magnesium and aluminium, and 15 and 16, what are they? Phosphorus and sulphur. Could do with a periodic table. So, these little drops cannot be explained just in terms of energy levels. We've got to consider the idea of sub-energy levels, specifically for these first period 3 uh, and period 2, S and P sub-energy levels. Now, as you know, the S subshell can only hold two electrons. The P subshell can hold six electrons. And the evidence for this comes from those drops in ionization energies. So let's start by considering uh, elements 5 and elements 13, because those elements have their outermost electron in a P subshell. That's where they drop. So boron and aluminium is a drop in ionization energy there. And we can use this idea of putting the outermost electron in a P subshell to uh, explain that drop because those, that P orbital is higher in energy than the S orbital. So therefore we can see that there's a drop in ionization energy from S to P and therefore it's going to be easier to pull the electron from the P subshell because it's further away from the nucleus. Only a little bit but it's enough to produce a drop in ionization energy. And what about the others? What about the drop between nitrogen and sulfur? Sorry, nitrogen and oxygen and phosphorus and sulfur. There they are. Now in this case we can't explain it in terms of our P uh, and S subshells. We've got to explain it in a different way. The way that we explain it is we consider the group 5 elements in terms of their P electrons. And you will notice that that element there, which is nitrogen, has its three 2p electrons in three different p orbitals. Oxygen, group 6, on the other hand, has one pair of its electrons paired up. And that is going to cause repulsion between the paired electrons. Therefore, it's easier to remove one of those electrons, and therefore, ionization energy drops. So, finally, electron configuration. Make sure that you have a periodic table for this, and know that the various blocks in the periodic table are known as S, P and D and the periods in the periodic table the rows, first row is the first period from hydrogen to helium and then starting at lithium that's the second period and then the third period is sodium. You can count along the boxes to get the electron configurations of your elements. So for example, from hydrogen to helium, 1s2. Moving into the second period, lithium to beryllium, 2s2. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, 2p6. And then we start again, sodium and magnesium, 3s2 and then all the way to argon, 
3P6 and we could carry on. So we can build up our electron configuration in terms of energy levels but also in terms of shells and subshells. That concludes electron configuration.